Asian film market where creativity meets finance. A very warm welcome to you on uh, behalf of the South Asian film market and also on behalf of Abhinand and Piyush Singh. Uh, I'm sure you remember you attended the Singapore South Asian International Film Festival in 2017. Yeah, so uh, the last two years, the festival has also started this uh, South Asian film market. And, uh, you know, um, uh, this was supposed to be the third uh, session of the film market, which unfortunately has got cancelled because of uh, COVID. Uh, but uh, we, we started a new section called the book to screen uh, section in the market where we were uh, hoping to achieve exactly what uh, your serious men has uh, achieved you know that is uh, book to adaptations of books to movies um, so uh, I would just like to ask you about uh, the entire experience of adapting a book like serious men into a movie and how it's uh, how did it start when my uh, writer uh, you know, Bhavesh Mandalia came to me and said, uh, we are going to buy the rights of Serious Men. Will you make it? Uh, I read it again and I said, yes. Uh, I mean, because it's such, a, it's, such a, it's such a vivid, interesting, upbeat, but dark book. You know, I mean, it's yes. so we said yes, but it took about eight months. And, and one of the good things was that Manu Joseph is such a brilliant man that he kind of understands that these are two different mediums. So, so he, uh, you know, knew that, you know, once you give the rights of the book, you know, and if you trust the filmmaker and the writers, whatever, then you uh, have to trust them. And, and they will do something. So you can't mimic his mind. I can't sit inside his head and make a film. So I have to sit inside my own head. So the book and it's it's uh, uh, things that inspire me will will uh, filter through my head, and then you know a f novel can go into many places, and and serious men goes into many places, especially the world of the serious men, which is Acharya, the science institute, his wife, his daughter, his friend, colleague, his relationship with Aparna. All the Ayan money and the son and his family and BD is all one aspect of the book. But exactly. We took, that, exactly. We, we, we took that and made it the centerpiece, and the others appear and Acharya appears is as much as it affects Ayan's life, right? So we exactly. in a sense with that and, and, and made a film. And uh, I guess you know our Ayan is slightly different than the than the book Ayan. Right. It is. So, it I mean, is actually it is. quite different from the book I hear. Uh, yeah, so, in the so book, I, 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 so luckily, you know, everybody has seen it like that. The film has has its own whatever. Of course, it's inspired by the book. Of course, it could not have existed without the book. Of course, it owes a lot to the brilliant mind of Manu Joseph. But then, yes. after that, it's a. It's its own, you know, and it's difficult to transform a book into a, because a great book, you know, I mean, works in words and abstract images and everybody has the idea of their own characters and the, the reader is a more active person. You know, he interacts yes. very, very, you know, I mean, so the, the, the viewer and because films, because of this entertainment and formulaic aspect, dumb down everything, right? Mostly, you know, the... The filmy viewer is a dumbed down person. You know, he's been told to, told, you know, is passively he waits, you know. He's like an old feudal waiting to be titillated. Right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Entertain me. Nacho. Yes. Entertain girl. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's this, you know, he, he's, this, he's this, you know, very uh, demanding, you know, bored. Very, somewhere, very. You know, so, I mean, to keep him engrossed, you know, and to keep him, and you can't, of course, you know, uh, you know, talk to the absolute formulaic viewer, but, but you know, many interests. So, but film, when, you know, when, when it starts working, and if you create something interesting, which is, which is, you don't explain everything, and there is a dynamic between the viewer and the, and the, and the, and the image there, and, and sound, and, then it's interesting, and then film becomes a great medium, right? In the hands, in the hands. If you respect the medium, if it's 
so i mean i i don't understand these days there's this whole thing about being a writers meet craft so i mean there's this whole thing this is a writers meeting what does that mean so as a director what am i supposed to do cover the action cut cut put camera in 10 places cut 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 dialogue and then then i now why am i required you know why why is a filmmaker required i mean he he cut 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 you know so the sound the picture the uh, the composition the 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 tension outside the frame you uh, the the production design you know everything should make the ability to make you smell <laughs> the ability to make you smell the place to to Absolutely. to to you to 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 feel to you know and and to and, and to then no, i think from the con- from, from the concrete i mean like if, if 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 in books you go from the abstract to the concrete from image from words to the concrete in cinema you can you know sometimes from that concrete take you inside the head of the character without so if you don't explain i mean if if it's engrossing interesting but you also respect the viewer and you allow him so then you know he he can have a dynamic relationship with the film and then that's exciting if you make the viewer get up and watch and not lie down and and yes I, if it take some it will, you know because of lazy viewing habits and because of the whole dumbing down of the mass media you know it's a, it's a problem but you know i guess uh, i i think it's a very necessary function of filmmakers to make the viewer alert to make him use his head because i think a lot of problems of the world are because the viewer the audience and therefore the voter is dumbed down yes yes of his, I, his I, thinking I, critical faculties being obliterated obliterated you have to if you say that oh you are giving him room to think you know all the sound and dolby and this and that and banging and titillation and he's watching like some zombie you know he's you know he's not using his head at all he's just being banged into submission you know all these you know so i mean i think that's really one of the causes of the problems of the world perhaps i may be exaggerating not at all i completely agree but uh, i have to say that what you have done in serious men uh, of uh, highlighting a certain aspect of uh, society which is sort of facing uh, a lot of problems and that is something that uh, you have maintained completely throughout the film and uh, you know sort of not sort of got distracted by any other sort of uh, uh debate or question or issue etc and uh, that's probably because you were very sure that you are going to be looking at only one aspect of the book and not get sort of distracted by the various I mean, other, other things are suggested because you also have that yes less than 2 hours and in less than 120 minutes of running time so oh, there are a lot of suggestions in, you know into the other world right and then you leave the the whether whether it is the builder and his daughter and there is a side story there whether it is acharya and aparna is assistant and there is a side story but you you suggest that but yes. main story is and because it's seen so much through ayan's eyes and which is why we exactly. designed the set like that you know because you know you see through the opening behind acharya ayan watching yes right so and is the, the image I... of him as a soaker as a boy or as somebody who soaks in he's He's seeing. Yes. He's inside the world of serious men, and he's in a sense learning from them. Yes, what absolutely. What he's done, what he's done, in a sense, is is a reaction to them. You know, and absolutely. He, you know, he's kind of half there, not there. So I mean, he's, uh, you know, I mean, that's why we don't, you know, we don't. He's neither villain nor hero, but he is heroic in a certain way. You know? Absolutely. And and uh, he's. And- in the middle no, no, is thinking he uh, improvising his way through so that po- otherwise these poor characters are always seen in indian cinema as victims as people without agency as those that do not laugh as those the, who cannot have no control at all over their lives who do not cannot invent a story for themselves 
who cannot change the screenplay of their lives you know it is you need some bada saab to come from outside you know so i mean i, I we were i it connected with the film for me it also connected with the film that i made in 91 called dharavi rajkaran uh, yadav and ayer ani have a connection yes 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 but and i have if i would suggest to people that if they see uh, uh, this uh, film serious men then go to cinemas of india the nfdc platform and see serious men and see uh, dhara views right right mm-hmm. yes absolutely but you have also been uh, you, your adaptation of uh, the book has also been a very very clever one uh, you haven't sort of you know fallen into the trap of trying to tell the story of the book instead you have decided to tell a story from the book which yes. is actually a very very intelligent uh, uh, stand to take uh, while you are uh, sort of trying to adapt from a book like serious men which has so many layers so many characters and so many stories interlaced many of which as you said you sort of uh, you know only suggested and uh, didn't really develop in the in the way so so that is something that uh, you did consciously as a filmmaker uh, when you uh, came to the making of it as a director uh, totally totally yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely and and you know i mean the thing about ian money's head is you're never sure whether he's telling the truth or not i mean some lot of people said why is he speaking in that kind of line somebody said why is acharya saying for instance at the end your anger is your angst is right your action is wrong yeah but yeah. you know, people are yeah. not always speaking the truth yes character you know that's another fallacy in cinema criticism that the character is saying what he means you know the the film is saying what it means and from a play between characters you should judge the meaning yes you should not you know it's you should not that's why it's called a play right you in, in the interplay between the characters between lines between feelings between in, in the context of a situation you have to grasp the meaning you don't i mean a character is not necessarily sometimes a, a character is speaking a cliche is the film speaking a cliche is that scene speaking a cliche is what you have to judge right yes so i mean this from the interplay of all that you know sometimes but you know people sort of say things and that is also bad habits that people say so sort of dialogue and in, you know they got used to saying you know like for instance you know in in, in most many films and uh, you know formulaic type of films where you know you first tell me what the character is then you tell let the other characters tell me what the character is then you put a song in order to explain what the character is and then think, you know so i've done it done three times you know so people got used to it so yeah, then if you don't yeah. do three times there's a emotion nahi oh wo baat nahi hai yaar i remember i remember the scene where uh, you know uh, he releases the pigeons on the terrace and that was such an amazingly telling scene where uh, the character is saying so much about himself yeah, about his life yeah, yeah, about some himself and what he's done to the child but he's done it exactly it's necessary yeah. for him so with, with sally he's yeah. been rather cool it's a kind of dark, yeah. it, it, maybe his darkest moment right where he's frightened yeah. the child into submission yeah. right and he's kind yeah. of upset with himself right yes and yes. then he releases the the pigeons then he goes down yeah. and goes to the competition of kids and all that and he's telling a lie to his wife he's saying i am mani chahta hai ki tum mere aadi ke sath aisa karo ya bechna chahni chahta hai usko but he is doing exactly the same thing so i mean exactly. it's an interplay between scenes no yes you know yes. it's moments in his life you know when he he feels right but now he's on a on on a on a on a tiger which he can't control you know and yeah, slowly and travels he unravels his own absolutely. life absolutely and, and uh, you know so i mean is he telling the truth in the end is that story about the about the photograph real exactly is the is the photograph really true it, no it, one knows because we never cut to a flashback no no and, no right? you don't so we maintain that that that, that, that we maintain that that 
you know, you know, yes. uh, just like charity. But you know, I I don't expect critics to get that. You know, but you know, we've never cut. We've never cut to. A, we've never been clever, fake, whatever. We've never. We've held on to that place, to that photograph, yes. to his version of the story. Yes. I mean, who knows it's the truth? Who knows it's half? Who knows if he's exaggerated in his head? Who knows whether he's blackmailing or getting Acharya emotional, emotional in order to for him to he, because he needs him at that moment. Yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. so could be one of many things, you know. Some of which we intended, some of which we didn't intend because any piece of work also has a you know there's an unconscious. Life of there. its own. Yes. Because, you, know, you don't know. You're not in control of everything. Not the at all. Is not in control of everything. You know, so much not of it is in my head. Other filmmakers, other things, life. Somebody stray thought. Somebody said. You know, it's a you know, it's a kind of a relay race which comes to this one film. Yes, but serious man has certainly you know, uh, kudos to you. It has certainly generated a lot of uh, uh, responses, and it has sort of uh, uh, come into America. its own and created a life of its own, which is always uh, a huge uh, a compliment yeah. to maker. You know, you have yeah. managed to sort of uh, in 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 excite the viewer enough to question, to imagine, to create on his or her own, and that in itself is a is a huge yeah. and, and, and that's. I, why you know you make films in order to have a conversation with with somebody or to 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 trigger some not to find a definite answer right where he's going what I mean you could have your own view of the film I mean you don't have to agree with everything in the film just watch it actively yes don't watch yes. it passively watch watch I it like an active viewer you know and react to it right and so I mean so then that's interesting you know. I love it. I don't love it. That's all right, you know. But but you see it as an actor. And I, if I if one can create act, one, if one can create more active viewers, like an a passive, like an active reader, like an e-reader, you know, if I can yeah. transform the viewer into someone like the reader, it's it's more interesting. I hope more viewers oh. become like readers. So on that point, let me sort of now start ask you about, uh, uh, you know, Serious Men uh, is actually uh, one in a series of movies which have been released uh, only on TT platforms, you know, and uh, not in the theatres. And uh, this uh, trend will probably con continue now for some time, thanks to the pandemic situation we are in. Uh, so what do you feel about that? How do you feel about your movie not really having a theatrical release at all and only having a digital release? Uh, what are your views on that? First of all, OTT, digital streaming platforms uh, have given a uh, person like me a new lease of life. Uh, you know, so I think it's damn interesting. Uh, there are many formats that open up because of that, right? Because, you know, there's uh, a long form cinema. I'm a failed novelist. My structure is that of a novel often in my films. My side characters often sort of have lives of their own. They are not submissive to the main characters all the time, which is something that a lot of passive type of viewers don't like and dumb critics don't like and mostly male stars don't like but uh, you know uh, i think it's it, it, i think it's kind of uh, interesting you, think, uh, you uh, know this long yeah, form you know you know you can you can today it's what is interesting you can make a short film you have a 2 hour thing you can make a 2 hour film feature you have a mini series something that requires a 6 so, hour thing or so not, or something like the wire, you know, which 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 goes into all aspects of, of of street life, you know, you know, you understand the street from all perspectives, which is wonderful. Yeah. That's one great series television work that I've seen, but I also miss the, the theater. I miss the theater in the sense of the fact that the director's in control. Right. You know, the, the, the lighting is more or less yours in a good theater. I mean, we are talking about ideas which don't exist in India, especially all the time. But you know, I mean, you know, the 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 sound, the picture. You know, you sit, you know, and you you have the viewer. So I mean, I think it's 
uh, it's interesting to 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 see you think and i the, think all of it will survive the same way but digital is very good and the platform so it's more open, egalitarian more egalitarian it opens up and and you see you 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 are as good as the film as good as what you've made i mean i i don't think for example stardom works then it doesn't mean stars won't work but stars have to work yeah. because I mean, they, also have to, they have to they have to work i mean in the in the in the piece itself otherwise you know and so i mean a manoj bajpay film or a manoj bajpay piece of work or a big star piece of work so called big star are kind of more equal on a platform right more yes, exactly. you know i was kind of you see something sort of like, that, you see something yeah. like scam you see, see see something like scam on on sony live and you see uh, the fact that you know i never knew any of that i don't know if I'm, i'm from cinema but i've never worked with most of these actors most of them are fairly new one or two have seen some of them of course i know and have seen but uh, uh i knew some not, none of the main ones and and uh, they work so well right so i mean yeah. sometimes it's, it's, you get into that world so much because i don't know anyone i don't know I don't, i'm not seeing him as a star doing a performance i'm just seeing the character and exactly. i think it's damn interesting uh, you so know all this so the digital viewer someone who's watching the ott do you think that viewer is more uh, invested in what watching so they are actually somebody you would like to sort of address uh because they are more invested in what they are watching they are not distracted with popcorn and coke and uh, you know someone's phone came or etc etc they are watching because they choose to watch uh on the on the ott well, if 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 he is like that and he doesn't get distracted and he's watching it turning off the light and you know putting his children to sleep or whatever i mean damn it a lot of people say there is you know people's attention span is going down but if you see a whole season of a show on a weekend your attention span is only increasing and not going down right i mean exactly. you see the exactly. season right because so, i mean it's both things are happening and i think it's a happy mix of everything you know and, and i think this one another good thing is that you watch what you want when you want and 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 uh, it's like a, a digital platform is like a window where where everybody can go in and watch what they want so there will be a lot of niche kind of uh, uh, shows and and uh, 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 so do you think serious men uh, do you think serious men has uh, done better on netflix than it might have done uh, in a, on a theatrical uh, platform like a well, theatrical release i mean uh, that's what do you think that's for grabs that's up for grabs but you know it, it's it's a netflix original well it's a, it was made for netflix right it's not a acquired thing it was it's it's, it's a netflix original this was yeah done yeah by it netflix, is commissioned by netflix for netflix so then here you know you had you could you knew what you were going for i mean so i mean i uh, you know whether that's you know everybody wants a little more and you, know, you wish you know that something could release in a theater as well we have made serious men in a way that it can be tomorrow viewed in a theater if 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 tomorrow technology changes and i can wish a film uh, on, on on say uh, it will change it has it already exists the technology if i can wish for it to be screened on a uh, 200 inch wall of mine right and i can the sound can be great if you see serious men like yeah. that it'll hold because it's shot with that with that technical requirement so we in, yeah. in a sense we have made it future ready you can you can i mean i know how only to make large screen cinemas so i made up the film like that i have never thought about the, the small screen and i i know that the netflix technology is great right so, so you can you know exactly. the, the technical quality of the work on netflix is outstanding Right, so exactly. Uh, exactly. You can you hear every sound. You have here the picture. You see the depth. You know, you see everything. So we are, you know, in in very technologically advanced environments also. 
It's not the old yeah. sort of, you know, VHS, whatever you're watching on some small screen. Small no, the viewing experience is very rich. On Netflix, very. the viewing experience is very rich. So that is never a problem at all. Um, also, the but newer go- audience, the newer, younger viewer is also seeing it in another way. He sees it in, you know, with his headphone, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and then he's yes. got the laptop here, right? So he's yeah. watching with this yeah. concentration like that. That's a new... Exactly. You know, so you, yes. you know, he's watching, he's hearing the sound and everything and he's watching it very immediately, he's seeing everything. Uh, going forward, uh, what do you see the future uh, would look like, you know, given that we have got into a trend where there are more movies that OTT platforms are releasing, both which they are acquiring, both which people are, uh, I mean, where people are also selling to them. And, you know, in future theatrical releases will probably go down or take time to come up. How do you see the future really panning out in the next couple of years? I think everything coexists. And, and, uh, you know, some people watch the theatrical experience and, you know, I mean, people, there are some films which can be seen on a theater and and best enjoyed on a very large screen, you know, and and, uh, sometimes the experience of community, you know, watching at people, I mean, you don't just go to an office in order to work. You go to an office in order to interact, to be, we are social beings, you know. So, you know, a young boy goes to a office and a young girl goes to an office to meet him and her, you know, also. You know, you, you go to an office because you have a stunning, you know, very interesting, dynamic boss, right? And you, 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 you interact, you know, you grow with, with that interaction. And it's interesting for a young kid, you know, he doesn't want to stay in his two-bedroom hall with his parents, he want to go to, you know. So this, you know, I think everything will 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 be there, and theater will be there, and and uh, the OTT is fantastic because you can watch anything, repeat, watch, watch, watch again. Will it anything at your time in in a very great technical environment where you want? So that I think is 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 wonderful, and and gives you a sort of freedom, which yes. is also very yes. interesting. Yes, because you know you are bound that. by this or that or you know, you know, unrestricted, there's no such thing as absolute freedom, right? No, but but not. you are within, within uh, law, a broader framework. Within, within, you know, you can do most things today. We were basically trying to sort of get use books which can be adapted onto a screen, whether as a film or a web series or, uh, you know, a non-fiction show, whatever. And that is the reason why uh, we were so keen to reach out uh, to Sudhir Mishra and you uh, uh, post, uh, you know, your very successful outing of the book into the film and have this uh, uh, talk with both of you. And uh, we are really, very happy to have you uh, with us. Yeah, and. Exactly. Uh, and I would start off by congratulating you on your Bollywood debut, not only as the author, but also the actor. A Stan Lee kind of cameo. Yeah, yeah. As a, as a journalist who gets snubbed by my own character. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> How was the whole, uh, let me ask about Serious Men, in, uh, sp- uh, you know, uh, specifically to start with. How was your experience uh, of, uh, you know, adapting the book into the into the screen format. Uh, experience specifically, what exactly? Uh, uh, what because uh, there are so many differences between the book and the movie. You know, this is something that yeah. Sudhir and I also sort of discussed at length as to uh, how much more the book is. You know, so many more yeah. characters, so many more stories, so many more layers. But the, yeah. the cinema, the movie, is, is actually focusing on only one particular character and his story. So, so was there a, a decision? Who, who made the decision? Were you part of that decision? How did that uh, you know, go forward, etc.? Uh, right at the beginning when uh, Sejil Shah and uh, Babesh Mandalia uh, bought the rights for the book, I was uh, fairly clear that uh, they sh- need not be under any creative pressure to be faithful, entirely faithful to the book. You know, right. so I wanted all the characters to be retained uh, because uh, I uh, I look at the novel uh, as 
a very different medium from the film and the and uh, uh, and i didn't want the film to be just a vehicle for the novel because it needs its own uh, way of storytelling uh, and the novel entirely leads leans on the mind uh, what's going on inside a character's mind and that is exactly what the film can't show uh, unless it's in the form of a narration which are not cinematically powerful tools so uh so uh, i and uh, in the making of the film it was very interesting because i realized how uh, uh moralistic a film is compared to a novel where the film when the makers of the film were preoccupied with why is this character doing it in serious man a man promotes his son uh, as a genius as a 10 year old son as a genius and he fools the whole world for a long period of time um and of course the the book asks uh, the question like why is he doing it but i just quickly dispensed with it but the film is almost entirely preoccupied with this motivation which i found very fascinating you know it's like i was wondering like why uh and uh, that is the uh, that is the language of film which people don't even even films that appear to be gray and uh, very postmodern they are very moral in their heart compared to literature um so uh, uh, i i found uh, i found the preoccupation with the why uh, why would a character do something uh, very uh, uh, very different from the novel and i'm glad that they uh, didn't force themselves to be uh, faithful to the novel because that would be out of character for those those makers so so do you think how would you say i uh, like on as far as sorry from a novelist point of view when uh, i ask you why you did something you will give a set of reasons and those reasons are completely unimportant to me because i don't even take those reasons seriously and you will not take them because everybody has need set of reasons but we don't know why we do what we do right so that that that's how the novelist will look at reasons in fact i find reasons very suspicious you know like neat like why why did this happen this happened why did we get independence this happened you know why are farmers committing suicide because this is complete reasons are you know but a film needs that scaffolding you know, for uh, so i i feel a film is very political that way sorry no no not at all uh, how how else do you think the book helped in making the film such a success you know i mean the film has been a success and uh, it has been critically and uh, commercially acclaimed uh, the performances yeah. have been sort of applauded uh, and uh, how do you think the book sort of uh, proved to be a, a help in making the film what it is like uh, do you at have a, any thoughts about that at a fundamental level the the screenwriter the film writer is a very different uh, creature from a novelist uh so the the serious men uh, kind of a story uh is not something which uh, which a screenwriter would naturally write you know it's not just the uh screenplay derivative i'm talking about but just the idea of a man uh set in a particular place and his uh, the entire novel uh, serious men is observation of two men chiefly you know and uh, from their from their observations it derives um, its story but that is not how a screenwriter would think their instinct is to think of a story that can be shown you know so my instinct as a novelist is to think of a story that is thought by the characters in that sense there's something unnatural about a novel novel uh, a novel where a character is walking and i'm flanked by in fact i remember this when i was writing the novel flank flanked by jaundice yellow walls and uh, 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 he thought of a woman from another time that's not how people think okay it is a fantasy of thinking uh, which a novel uh, derives from and you know that you can you can do a lot because you don't yeah. have to show anything yes yes uh, so in that sense it was a good combination for uh, uh, that's why i think many films which are now adaptations of book okay they they think there's something different um because uh, because of this but otherwise i feel that i mean i don't i, I hope no film people see or watch this because i want them to continue to be in awe of books 
but i feel that uh, in terms of uh, in many aspects of storytelling film writing is way ahead of the modern novel they have done everything actually and so in, in, to to an extent they are overrating the novel but i don't uh, i don't mind it <laughs> naturally not but don't you think that uh, you know uh, the story as such is something that the book lends a lot of strength to uh, uh, rather than uh, you know before rather than, uh, going to the to the screenplay level that uh, when uh, a, a book story is picked up by a screenwriter the story itself is so strong that it uh, gives the screenwriter a kind of confidence uh before he actually starts writing a screenplay and therefore sort of creates a screenplay which is more confident more nuanced more uh, just stronger you know no more than the story i mean i i i feel that the story by itself is a is a trivial thing you know um which is over adored by storytellers and when people try to create a story ultimately it's the character and what in fact many of the problems will with film writing comes from their obsession with the story uh, uh while all along right from the Bi- right from the bible to shakespeare to today and from mahabharata ram the story was always something which which it's like a, an idea delivery device a character delivery device which has become a mon stood today with a lot of theory on what to do and you know a lot of fluff but it is always the character moment we are interested we are megalomaniacs we are interested in ourselves if you can show if i can show you uh you i have you you know and then what uh, what happens to the character people will imagine a story and then you know the most unnatural thing in the world is ending a story you know and most of the time story ends because something has to end at 6 300 pages something has to end after 3 years of work something has to end after 90 minutes end is a very stupid thing in a story and it's a very unnatural thing and every person who's written a story knows that the ending is bogus <laughs> because you you're writing a story not to end the story right but you have to end it. so the main right. aspects which are so i i feel that i mean I, so i've always been curious about the character and story is um, you know i i mean i enjoy the process of doing the story uh, but that is more uh, skill than uh, than something more complex which creates a character so you know, it's the character is almost like anthropology <laughs> sorry no it's the character also which is uh, sort of you know shouldering the story and in a book yes. that character you get the you get the uh, space to sort of uh, do a lot with the character which probably is not uh, given to the screenwriter because the screenwriter is uh, you know he has to or she has to sort of do it within a, a specific time period whereas a novel has a lot more sort of elasticity and you can do a lot more uh with your character in the novel and uh having yeah, given yeah. your imagination those wings aren't you also sort of giving the screenwriter uh, a lot to sort of you know draw from and therefore giving yeah. him or her a lot of uh, uh background and strength to draw, draw from yes in fact i feel that uh, from 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 what i have seen of how film writers approach a story i now i feel that uh, novelists should attempt screenplays of their books even before the final draft of their own novels and i think it will be interesting for screen writers to start off with a short story or a novella before they write the screenplay the reason i say this is uh, that as uh, a uh, film writing is, a, is largely about efficiency there is no flap their thinking is one i can only say what i can show and and everything that is inessential uh i should remove while from a literature point of view there's nothing which is inessential everything that has come out of a mind 
has a reason to exist. And again, it depends on your megalomania, how much of it you want and how much of the mom or your bad marriage you yeah. want to put, you know. Uh, yes, there is a lot of process. There's a process of editing in a book, but a book is more accommodating of yes, uh, yes. What, is, what, what film writers call flab and yeah. fat and all that, you know. Uh, yeah. Like, for example, in, uh, uh, in Serious Men, the lead character, Iron Money, when he looks at uh, the people on the Warley Sea face walking, and when he sees women walking fast, he sees they are fleeing from the fate of looking like their moms. And when he sees a beautiful woman, he, wa- he has to go and overtake her and look at her to reassure himself that she's not as beautiful as his wife. You know, he, he compares beautiful women to expensive phones, CQ homes and Mercedes. Now, a film writer would never have, if, if a film writer created Iron Money, they would not know these things about Iron Money, you know, because they are into like, what can he show? Like he's a fast walker, what he does, you know, those things might bother them. But it, but Iron Money emerges from the, these thoughts, you know, so even if you're not uh, able to, so in that sense, the book helped the screenwriter because they know the whole backdrop, even if they're not going to show it. Yes, yes, uh, correct. Or if they can only mention this, for them to create the scene, they have to create an accomplice for Ryan. They have to create another man friend, you know, to whom he's talking. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or Ayn yeah. is narrating in the backdrop, which is always, a, it is a very weak device in cinema. Right. Uh, but if I make a, a, a film of the scene, I will have a narration or I'll, I'll find a way in which I bring this and maybe I'll screw up the scene, you know, so I don't know. Uh, so uh, in order to sort of keep this conversation going, uh, I would actually like to invite you to the South Asian film market, uh, which we'll hopefully be able to hold next year in Singapore. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, this conversation about uh, writing, whether for a book, or a film or a show carries on and uh, we can sort of draw from each other's strengths as and when we require it. And uh, uh, let's hope for a brighter future for uh, uh, the novelist and the screenwriter and all around in 2021 and hope to see each other in person in uh, 2021. Yes. yes, I hope so too. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Manu, for joining us on this talk. Lovely talking to you as always. See you. Bye-bye.